welcome to No Walls. As you can see, everybody's not abiding by the that we are being obedient. Welcome to No Walls. This is my first but never in video. The camp. So this is going to be a new experience. Um, again. Hi guys, welcome back to No Walls. I am so excited to have each of you worshiping with us this Sunday. Happy Sunday goes out to all of my sailors and to all of you serving in the military. Thank you to you and your family for all that you do. Um, happy Sunday goes out to all of the youth, the young adults, especially to the graduating class of 2022. We have already celebrated two of our college graduates, so congratulations to both of you um, ladies. And then we have three high school graduates coming up within the next couple of uh, yeah, next couple of weeks. And so we're very proud um, of everything that you have allowed God to do through you in your education. Um, and we encourage you to keep going. Just do not forget to put God first in all that you do. Um, a quick shout out goes to Bella's Boxes, uh, Little Bella Potts. She is the founder of a nonprofit called Bella's Boxes. You can go to bellasboxes.org. Um, and there you can see how you can support her efforts to uh, donate to different organizations and different people. So we just want to say continue um, doing the work of Jesus Christ that you do at your young age. Um, and we will be praying for you. I am going to uh, jump right into the word of God. Um, this word is piercing. Um, it is an uncomfortable message for me. Um, because first God dealt with me and and then I'm gonna come for y'all. <laughs> Holy Spirit came for me and then he is like, okay, and here it is for, you know, um, those who watch or listen and those who are doers of the word of God. I want them to hear this. Um, and so the disclaimer is I am so far from perfect. Um, and so I hope that you take this for yourself. Um, and don't worry, I'm taking it for myself as well. Um, so today our focus first comes from Habakkuk 2. I know when we hear Habakkuk 2, we get to shouting, you know, verse 2, let's write the vision, make it plain, Woo, let's go. But um, God wants, the Holy Spirit has shown me the last verse in Habakkuk 2. And the last verse in Habakkuk 2 is just as, woo, like we love it. Um, and Habakkuk 2 verse 20 says, um, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all of the earth keep silent before him. That's Habakkuk 2.20. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all of the earth keep silent before him. Most of us have heard that um, when we do our call to worship uh, at church service. And so today's message is, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Read the fine print. Whoa, whoa, read the fine print. Um, I love this message just because I get a, a chance to tell this story about my brother that I have, I laugh at every now and then just because of me not having knowledge, um, being young. And sometimes when we're young, we think we know everything and we don't. Um, so if you're young, please seek godly counsel. Please at least listen to your parents, give them a chance because they've been through things that they're trying to keep you from going through. <laughs> so my brother was dating this girl, could not have been more than five minutes, maybe it was a month, I don't know, but they were newly together and he was dating her and it was Christmas time. Um, he wanted to get her a gift. So um, I went with him, we went to, I wanna say it was like Macy's or something. It may not have been, but anyways, we go and he has decided uh, we see this sign that says uh, gold necklace five dollars and it could have even said <laughs> pure gold necklace for five dollars and i'm like oh, and we're both like you got it oh my god like that is great yes get her a gold necklace for five dollars why wouldn't you i mean that's that's a steal it's such a great deal so my brother goes up and we're both just so excited and, and the guy is like, okay, so the, the gold chain was like on a spool kind of thing. And, you know, he was like, I'm going to roll it out and tell me when to stop. Whatever length you want the necklace, you just let me know. So he begins to roll it out. My brother goes, stop. They cut it. They cut the gold, chain it up at the end, whatever. And um, my brother, they're like, okay, it's 400 and <laughs> something dollars. I'm like, wait, what? whoa <laughs> that's me like whoa wait what's going on 
my brother trying to be cool, like, to pretend like he knew it, because it kind of was, and I was embarrassed. I don't know if he was, but he kind of tried to play it off. He went ahead and paid the $400, which was all the money he had ever in the whole wide world, all the money he had saved, not for a gift, but just all of his money gone within seconds because we didn't read the fine print. We went back to go read it. Like when the guy walked away, we went back to read the sign and be like, I think that $5 pure gold chain, but it said $5 per link. So he basically had gotten like 80 links. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, his bill was $400. And it's amazing how much it costs us spiritually. It's amazing how much it costs us in life and time. Um, I did a message a couple of weeks ago about you don't know the cost. The cost of not reading the fine print, not gaining wisdom and understanding. And so today I want to say, whoa, because you need to see the whoa. You got to read the fine print. Um, I was looking for something. I, I don't want to tell you another one of my childhood stories, but <laughs> I was researching something in scripture. And when I got to my phone to research it, no matter which phone I use, no matter which tablet, no matter who, what, when, where, how, for some crazy reason, Ezekiel 34, uh, 31 kept popping up. It kept popping up. Um, Ezekiel 34 and 31. And it says, you are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, declares the sovereign Lord. Again, it says, you are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, declares the sovereign Lord. And I was like, yes, God. But wait a minute. What does that have to do with what I'm asking you? What does that have to do? What, why are you leading me to this scripture? So y'all know me, everything is, has to be context. Everything has to be context because I really want to understand scripture better. I go back to say, well, let me read all of 34. This has got to be powerful. I was just excited. So I go back to read Ezekiel 34. Um, and it says the Lord will be Israel's shepherd is the title given to this chapter. But this chapter is not happy at all it may end well with the lord is your shepherd <laughs> but it's talking to pastors and this passage of scripture was basically saying whoa w-o-e to pastors to shepherds who are responsible for sheep who have caused those sheep to not eat and for those sheep to be uh-oh, Pastor Lee, I'm going to need you to get it together. <laughs> you know, we learned very quickly during the pandemic. If you had a good shepherd or if you just had a shepherd, this whole chapter that the Holy Spirit led me to was saying, whoa, the term. Now, when I'm saying W-O-A-H, I'm saying slow down, wait, or I'm saying, wow. But when I'm saying W-O-E, whoa. And woe is in scripture. It is declaring impending doom. That means it's going to happen. Like, this is going to happen and it's not going to be good. Woe, W O E, is not saying this is impending and it's, it, it's, a, it's a good promise. Um, one of our favorite things to say is all of your promises, God, are yes and amen. All of your promises. Well, woe is a promise. <laughs> W-O-E is also a promise of God. And you're correct. It is still a yes and an amen. All of his promises. And, and in this chapter, he is saying, whoa, Pastor, you ate, but you didn't feed your sheep. Whoa, Pastor Lee. You gained, but your sheep lost. Whoa, Pastor Lee, you weren't showing up. And so your sheep were scattered and, the, and wandering in the world and taking hold and grasping on to everything except the name of Jesus Christ. Woe to you, Pastor. And he's basically saying, everything that you stole will be stolen from you, Pastor Lee. Everything that you have taken from those sheep will be taken from you. I ain't playing with you. And since you don't know how to shepherd my sheep, we get down to verse 31. 
in verse 31. He says, you are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, declares the sovereign Lord. He says, in other words, I'm going to bring my, my sheep into safety. I'm already the good shepherd. I gave you charge over these sheep, but Pastor Lee, since you ain't going to do right, now I will take them back. So if you are a pastor, if you are in charge of sheep, if God has given you, if, you, if, you're, a, if you're a deacon or someone who is ordained to lead and to, to watch over, this is talking to us. Ezekiel 34 is telling us, look, are you taking care of my sheep? See, when, when, when you are a pastor over a church, and, and no walls, we are not there yet financially and it's and it's okay like that's the least of, of no walls concerns and worries like that's the least right now um your sheep it's okay that that's how you make a living that you're a shepherd yes it is fine that you make your your monetary living off of watching after sheep yes that's good you should that's not a bad thing. That's not a negative thing. When tithes are given, they are also given to take care of the shepherd. That is a good thing. But that's because this good shepherd is feeding the sheep. See, if you don't feed the sheep, they die, they scatter, then you don't have a flock to watch over to, to have your quote-unquote occupation. And God is warning. He was warning Israel back then. And we pick and choose which scriptures are back then. <laughs> That's not for us pastors today, Pastor Lee. <laughs> God wasn't talking to you. Yes, he was. All scripture, all scripture is talking about something that has already happened. Except when we get to Revelation, it starts talking about what's going to happen, what we're in right now. But we can't pick and choose which scriptures that we want to apply to us today. They apply to us. And so in Ezekiel 34, the Holy Spirit kept leading me here. And because I went back and read the fine print, by the time I got to verse 31, it was no longer like, yes, God. God was saying, Pastor Lee, because you didn't do the job. Now I got to step in and do it for you. So, whoa, W-O-E, it is impending doom. And we have to be mindful of that. We cannot just sit by and not do the work that we were called to do. And so then God led me to Habakkuk 2 and 20. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all of the earth keep silent before him. That's great. Amen. Yes, the Lord is in his holy temple. We love that. Again, we open most church services with that call to worship. If you go at the top of Habakkuk 2, I mean, we got 30 vision boards. You know why? Because of Habakkuk too. Write the vision. Make it plain so that when they see it, they will run. Do y'all know? <laughs> Have y'all read the fine print on that? <laughs> because it's a whoa. It's not like a yes. It's a W-O-E. Impending doom is attached. See, if you go back to Habakkuk 1, he is questioning God. Like, God, do you see Judah? How long, how long, God, are you going to let this community wave this rainbow flag declaring that you're okay with this sin and that you are God? How long are you going to let them steal from each other? How long are you going to let liars and murderers prevail? How long are you going to let people do us wrong? Like you said, fret not. And, and we see it in scripture where God says, fret not when it looks like the wicked are getting away with their scheme. And here Habakkuk is going, Lord, how long are you going to wait for before you move, before you do anything? You told us to fret not. That's Habakkuk 1. That's Habakkuk questioning God. And God is like, well, I'm going to send Babylon. <laughs> and Habakkuk is like, hold on. <laughs> they worse than Judah. <laughs> Why would you send somebody worse than Judah <laughs> to, to take over Judah? Because remember, this is a quick lesson in case you haven't been watching No Walls. Judah is one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Don't forget that. That is so important. Judah. Judah is also the name of one of the 12 sons of Israel, and Israel's original name is Jacob. 
Remember, God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. And so Israel was originally a person and not a place. That's why we say the children of Israel were also saying the children of Jacob. And one of Jacob's sons' name was Judah. And so his sons, uh, so the, the 12 tribes of Israel, of Jacob, were uh, the, the 12 sons became the 12 tribes of Israel. And so one of the tribes is Judah. Um, which is, we also know is the lineage of Jesus Christ. And so here Habakkuk's like, they're bad. But why are you sending somebody worse? Why are you sending a worse group of people to conquer the children of Israel? Because that's what Judah was. It was just one of the tribes. And God says, hold on. And so we get to chapter 2. This is God answering with, whoa, W O. And he tells Habakkuk, listen, you write the vision and make it plain. What vision? What I'm about to tell you. <laughs> All the woes I'm about to give you, that's what I want you to write down. And I want you to write it down so that when it comes to pass, they will know it. Oh, it's going to happen. Because that was Habakkuk's question. When, God? He says, listen, it's in its time. In its season, again, all of his promises are yes and amen. That's not just the good promises. That's the other promises, <laughs> the ones we don't too much want to come to pass. See, if you read Habakkuk 2, it is saying, listen, some of you all have gained. It's just like it's talking to the pastors in Ezekiel. It, it, like you have gained unfairly, unjustly. Um, you have taken from people. Um, and when it says that it will come to pass at an appointed time, that was Habakkuk's question. Uh, let me show you the woe. I'm going to show you something that is probably going to make some people feel uncomfortable because, you know, it just is. And, and I, you know, I'm sorry to anyone um, that I offend, but it's the truth. And we have to start speaking the truth. We have to let people know. Um, yes, sin is sin. Lying is a sin. Stealing is a sin. Gossiping is a sin. Um, sin is sin. Adultery is sin. And um, one of the biggest sins plaguing us right now, outside of murdering and all that other stuff that's a sin, is homosexuality. Um, and that sin is so deep because it's the one sin that we accept, that we say, it's okay. Oh no, God loves this sin. Now, I have relatives that, you know, um, identify that way. I have friends that identify that way and the person and the people I absolutely love and I do pray for them. I absolutely do, I pray for them. However, flaunting sin is what got us in trouble. <laughs> is what got mankind in trouble the first time. And we are back to doing the same thing. Hey, come out of the closet. No, you may <laughs> you might need to go back in your prayer closet a little bit longer. Like, like it is one of those sins that we say is okay. We do not have liar pride parade. We don't have adulterer pride. We don't go down the street going, oh yeah, I sleep with everybody. <laughs> we don't have those kind of parades. We don't have, you know, stealing pride parade like I, I'm a thief yep I'll be at your home tonight like we don't but this one sin we flaunt it we 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 elevate it we glorify it and you know when 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 the when the rainbow flag is flown uh there's a huge misunderstanding that rainbow um I know some people think you know that's a promise of God it is it is a covenant that God made with us um, and so we're like, oh, the rainbow is, belongs to us. Let me tell you what that rainbow is. Because, again, we don't read the fine print. The rainbow is not a promise that the earth won't be destroyed. That's not what it is. It's going to be destroyed. <laughs> 100%. All the rainbow is saying is, not with water. Second Peter 3 tells us, listen, he's coming back. And it ain't going to be water. It's going to be fire. So when we're waving this rainbow flag, this symbol of a covenant, listen to what, listen to what we're doing. We're saying, woohoo, everybody celebrate.
destroyed the rainbow. God is going to destroy this earth with fire. I'm just saying, we don't read the fine print. We got rainbows on the back of the car. You know, look, our community is all rainbows. That rainbow is a promise that the earth won't be destroyed with water. But the Bible declares, oh, he's going to destroy this earth with fire. I'm just saying we don't read the fine print, but we run around yelling all of God's promises are yes and amen. But y'all, even the woe is a promise. God keeps all of his promises, not just the promises of, oh, prosperity. God promised me a car. He also promised impending doom. <laughs> he also promised <laughs> punishment. He also promised that when he comes back, everybody that didn't choose him, everybody that, that said that he wasn't real, you're not going with them. And 2 Peter 3 does a magnificent job. I encourage you to go and read it. 2 Peter and the third chapter, read it. It talks about the end times. It talks about there's going to come a day where the world is going to convince us that sin is good and that sin is right and that everything is okay and that we should just negate scripture because look where is God that's what Habakkuk was saying when you're going to show up God he said at an appointed time second Peter tells us look to God a thousand years is a day our time is not his time so if he says I'm coming back tomorrow for us tomorrow means in 24 hours to God tomorrow could be a thousand years from now but he's coming back and when he comes back those of us who have declared that he is the sovereign Lord and that Jesus Christ, if you declare that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, it means that you want to live a free life, free from the law, and you want to live a holy life. Like you strive, you press toward the mark. Is it easy? No. Is it easy to always tell the truth? No. Is it easy to not steal? No, you go into your workplace and you be like, they don't need all these pins. <laughs> That's stealing. <laughs> that is a sin. Is it easy to, for some people, their DNA makes them love or desire somebody that that their same sex was well, that easy no but that's what we have prayer for that's what we have deliverance for because the word of god will come to pass and he is warning us today he is saying woe to you pastors to you shepherds to you pastor lee and he's also saying woe to the sheep who take my word in second peter he says that he goes listen so many people have taken Paul's writings and twisted them and changed them and rearranged them to fit their evil lifestyle. You have to be honest about who God is. So when I read it, I was like, whoa, like, like, yikes. <laughs> and then I was like, whoa, like, we got to slow down. We got to slow down and pay attention. And we got to read the fine print. Because in that fine print, it says, whoa, impending doom. My brother's bank account was zero. <laughs> like he was doomed from the start because we didn't read the fine print. And I don't want that for you. It is God's desire. It is his desire and his will that all men be saved. But that's just not going to happen. But you ought to want to be in that number. You want to serve Jesus Christ. You want to choose him. You don't want to tell untruths about what the word of God says. You don't want to neglect the word of God just because the world is telling you. I know Instagram, Facebook, they all present this life and people are happy and I'm free now. I'm free. I can, I can come out of the closet. I can live in sin. You know, I can go to this village where they have lots of husbands and wives and everybody just sleeps together like, you know, oh, I feel free. But Jesus says, listen, you're going to have trouble in this life. It's not going to be easy. And you will be persecuted for living a right life, for trying at least. You've got to at least have that heart. You've got to try. 
doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean that um, the blood won't cover your sins, but this is a heart posture. And the scripture is, is warning us. It's saying, whoa, W-O-E. First, W-O-A-H. Slow down. Whoa. Slow down. And read the fine print. Don't just take, you know, the Lord's in his holy temple. Did you read what came before that? I am the Lord your shepherd. Pastor, did you read what, what that, <laughs> the result? That is the result of the woes. So I encourage you today, um, when you are buying things, when you are jumping into relationships, some of us just want to just, we just want to be in a, whoa, because there's a whoa, <laughs> there's an impending doom coming with that. There's a woe in, in your job decisions. We should be seeking God in everything. How do I slow down? Seek God. Pray. Sometimes it's godly counsel, but seek it out so that you will know that you have read the fine print and that you have gained wisdom and that you have gained understanding. The word of God says, listen, if you, God says, if you ask for wisdom, I will give it to you. He will give you wisdom to make the right choices. Again, you're not going to be perfect. So you might as well stop trying <laughs> to be perfect, but you should be trying to move closer to God. And that means I'm going to seek God in everything. And when I mess up, I'm going to repent. I'm going to ask God for forgiveness and I'm going to turn from that thing. And then when I mess up again, I'm going to repent again. And I'm going to declare that the Lord is God and that he is sovereign. And that he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for my sins. Y'all, whoa, whoa to us who have not chosen Jesus Christ, who have chosen to live a life after this world. Read 2 Peter 3. I encourage you to do that. If you don't know who Jesus Christ is, you can always reach out to me or Reverend Melissa. You can reach out to us at nowallsnowwhat at gmail.com and we will be glad to minister to you and to teach you and show you the love of Jesus Christ. If you want to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, it is so easy to do so. All you have to do in your heart is just say, you know what, God, I am a sinner. I am struggling with sin. There is some sin, God, that is consuming me. And I'm asking you to, I'm, I just want to receive Jesus Christ. I want to receive the blood of Jesus Christ into my life, God. I am a sinner and I am in need of a Savior. And when you declare that God did send Jesus Christ to die on the cross for your sins, that his blood was enough to cover those sins. It's not that it's not your good works. It's that his blood does. It's called grace. That he died, he was buried, that God raised him from the dead. If you believe that, then you are absolutely saved. And now you are free to run and tell the world what he did for you today. That he saved you. That he was able to look beyond your faults to save you. You don't have to get right and get perfect to come. You come and then he will do that. He will begin to perfect you. It is our desire that everyone be saved. Even your family members that don't watch, you know, we ask that you would pass this knowledge on to them so that they can be saved and to do it in a way that is loving and not beating them over the head. And if, if they are um, unapproachable, because some things is difficult, you can't just go up to your family members and be like, you're a sinner, stop. <laughs> but you pray. You go before God, you go before the throne and you pray for them first. If you would, if all hearts and minds are clear, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, God, just saying thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for being such a good shepherd. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for waiting on us, God. Thank you for revealing the W-O-E to us, God, so that we may change and that we would seek you more, God. That we would just want to have a heart for Christ. That we would just want to do good. That we would want to 
spread the gospel of Jesus Christ so that men can be saved. God, I thank you in advance for everything that you're doing um, through the, the, the church of no walls, the hearts that you are changing, the people that you are growing, God. And let us not just keep it to ourselves. Give us the courage to go out and to tell other people. God, I ask that you would just watch over us in these dark and wicked times, God, that you would protect your people, God. During this famine, I ask that you would supply these babies with the formula and the food they need, that it would be nourishment to their bodies, God. I ask that you would bless all of these new moms and young moms, God, so that they don't panic and so that they rely and trust completely on you, God. I ask that you would open up the windows of heaven right now, God, and pour out a blessing that we just don't have room enough to receive. These and all other things we ask in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you all so much. Thank you again for all of the prayers, the love, and the support um, that you all give to the community. Um, that we can be the church. That we can be the hands and the feet and the mouths um, of Jesus Christ so that men can be saved. Um, I will see you all again next week. Have a great Sunday. Bye-bye.